Up next, we've got Vladimir Blagojevich from Fulfill Funnel IO, who's going to be talking about how to leverage LinkedIn to get 61 inbound five-figure opportunities in the first year. All right, hello. My name is Vlad, and I'm from I'm co-founder of FullFunnel.io, and I want to tell you about how we use LinkedIn to land five and six-figure opportunities, all inbound, uh, all without spending money on the ads. So, what I want to explain in over the next 20 minutes, essentially, is how LinkedIn works if you're selling five, six-figure deals, uh, the framework that we use for LinkedIn, and what kind of results can you expect and when. After that, I want to show you how to drive awareness and demand so that you're not reaching out cold to people, and then how to actually start conversations in a way that you're getting 80% acceptance rate, 40% 40, 40 plus uh, response rate, and you're actually driving those opportunities. So we are an early stage, uh, started with two people uh, last year, uh, did a quarter million, we are going to the half million this year. We work with brands, B2B SaaS companies, with five or six figure deals, helping them in account-based marketing, which is what we focus on. And usually the idea is that from your target list, you should be able to generate opportunities with, with at least 20% of your target accounts. That's the approach. So let's start with the first part. So how does LinkedIn work for B2B SaaS companies with high annual contract value and uh, sharing also my framework and what kind of results you can expect. So this is our framework. So again, we call it account-based marketing framework, account-based marketing on LinkedIn. Why? Because you're focused on your target accounts. And just to be very concrete, for example, one of our clients, uh, we figured out, okay, what the best, like, what, what, what would be the best fit account? How, how can we define it? And they build a list of 11 accounts. 11, just 11. With about 150 buyers there. These are these were larger companies. And they ended up in six months uh, closing, well, let's say driving 5 million pip pipeline. So nine out of 11 accounts. These were 700,000 uh, bucks uh, deals, annual deals and they close two million out of it, they close three. So this is what I mean, like very, talk, uh, very focused account base. So what that means, it means as well that you should be targeting, so that's what in the middle there, you have the different types of people or roles in your buying committee, and a lot of people make that mistake. A lot of companies just go after the decision makers. Decision makers are the most difficult ones to get, and they're often maybe not even interested they're maybe interested more in the category than the actual solution, et cetera. So they're not the, you know, the only, they shouldn't be the only focus. They, you should actually be driving awareness, connecting and engaging the complete buying committee, including your champions, including different kinds of influencers and potentially also blockers. So that's in the middle. So how do you do that? Well, what do you have? You have on LinkedIn, above there you have, you can share posts, you can comment, you can engage with people they're connected to, that's another thing, and I will share you five different audiences you should be looking at. People, like I mentioned, just look at the decision makers, but there are actually five different audiences you can be looking at um, that your buyers trust, that your buyers are connected to. So you, you're using them kind of as amplification and a proxy to the target buyers. Obviously, what else do you have on LinkedIn? Well, you can grow your network proactively, like this is the only social network that allows you to do that. And if you do it in the right way, like I mentioned, with 80% 80, 80 plus acceptance rate, you can, you, know, you can do a pretty good job of that. And obviously, you have the messaging. So, but most people like screw up on the messaging. So I want to share with you how, how we do it so that it works well. So what are the kind of e results that you can expect? So if you're posting on LinkedIn and commenting, you should be able to drive millions of views of your content. And the content obviously relevant to the buyers, relevant to your brand. Uh, this is just a snapshot from my account uh, over, the, over the last year. But that's, you know, you could say, you know, it's a, 
a vanity metric, what does it mean? Well, uh, if you also look at the kind of accounts, at the kind of people and the buyers that are actually viewing that, that's just amazing that you're getting that. And I'm not, not really even connected to some of these companies, but these are, these are just amazing, amazing opportunity there. The second one is what some people like to call dark social. And what I mean by that is the most important conversations actually happen outside of your funnel. You know, the way that the buyers are buying today is very different than it was 10 years ago. Fortunately, a lot of companies sti still use outdated playbooks. So what that means is that, for example, I just recently closed the deal and I had to speak to the CFO and the COO and the CRO, the Chief Revenue Officer and the Head of Marketing. And I spoke so to four different people and they all knew me. And I was like, how do you know me? You know, I mean, they're not just knew who I was, but like, knew a lot of the stuff that we are preaching and that we are sharing, etc. What happened actually was I was just chatting with one of them and he was sharing out my content on the company Slack. This is what I mean by dark, dark social. So this is like really amazing because without you having to do all the work, you're actually driving this you know, demand over the whole buying committee. The third type of results is inbound you know, requests. And this starts to happen usually let's say after two quarters of being consistent, it's not something that happens quickly. The first thing that will happen is that people you're already connected to that know you, maybe some frozen deals, maybe people who you, you know, had a chat in the past, they know you, you work with them, whatever, you're connected with them, they will start seeing you on LinkedIn and they, they are the first one that will reach out to you for, let's say, inbound leads. But like pure inbound leads from people you didn't know before, that's something that usually happens a little bit, a little bit later. But it's, it starts happening and we see this like a ramp up when we started. So we started about a year, uh, two years ago, you know, consistently being, being active and I show you like our kind of a plan. Uh, what we do of the, of, of the activities, but essentially what happened is that at the beginning there was like you know, like, you know, the beginning of the, the hockey stick. There's nothing happening. There's nothing happening. There's a little bit. You, you see some, let's say, leading metrics. You see some, like, early signals. People are liking your content. They're starting to follow you. You know, you're seeing, like, the right buyers visiting your profile. All of these things that are kind of the early signal, but no revenue yet. So, and then it took some time, and you saw, you know, you saw people coming, reaching out to us and all of that. But it's only now that we see really it's ramping up. It's like, when a lot of people are, you know, complaining about the lack of demand and the downturn, we are, we are seeing like, uh, usually our, our, our third quarter is always the worst. This is like the best quarter we ever had. Like, it's just amazing how many people are reaching out to us. And this is a big one. And we call them outreach triggers. It's simply like you have different triggers that you can use to reach out to people so you're not reaching out to them cold. And the best trigger you, you, you have is actually people engaging with your content. So people engaging with the content that you're sharing is probably the best trigger. This, these are like usually, like I mentioned, 80 plus percent, 40 plus percent response rate, uh, high acceptance rate, like having good conversation, meaningful conversations. They're not necessarily immediately sales conversations, but are conversations about a topic that you, know, you can help them with, right? So you can have a very meaningful conversation very fast. And by the way, if they are actually buying, if they're in, in the buying mode, they will be, like in this example, they will, they will be reaching out to you and you will soon start to have a discussion that will lead into an actual qualified opportunity. A big one for us, uh, we are like two Eastern European dudes and like, no, but you know, like I'm Vladimir Blagovic, my co-founder is Andrei Zinkovic, like who the fuck are you guys, right? And so what ha helps a lot is by you know, connecting also to people like Nathan, like why am I here? It's exactly because of our LinkedIn activity. Andre got invited two times by Nathan on his podcast. He invited us to speak here. We got invited. We get invited to you know big conferences. Uh, this is the biggest podcast, B2B, B2B growth, biggest podcast in our space. And over time, you start building relationship with the influencers, influencers in your industry, whomever they are, right? So we are. I'm talking about a very specific. Uh, influencers in the industry, and you can do stuff with them. We do, for example, last March we did a summit, a virtual summit, more than 5,000 people subscribed. Uh, it was just amazing because of the people who were speaking there. So it was a little bit like Nathan is doing here, live and in person, we did it online. Um, 
just because we were there with you know the right people. And what happens as well sometimes, and you, <laughs> some of you may know Pip, like from Austin, uh, we built really good relationship with him. And after a while, this is kind of like the really nice uh, result is you start getting referrals from people who have influence in your industry. And this is like one of the largest deals we closed came, came through uh, a referral like that. Okay, so these were the seven different, so I showed, I showed you the framework, just the high level overview, you know, you remember you were targeting those buyers and I showed you the different results that you're gonna expect. So I, I wanna share with you two more pieces. Like the, the, the first one is like, how do you drive this awareness and demand and like very practically, how do you create content for LinkedIn in a way that's not going to take you too much time? And I spoke about these different activities like posting, commenting, engaging, but I wanna just mention like two important things. And I already spoke about this, like people want to focus on the decision makers, but you actually have a bunch of other people who are connected to your buyers, who your buyers trust, who your buyers, you know, have a relationship with that you can be influencing. And the way that we look at it is you have, obviously you have the target buyers, you have their colleagues, you have the complete committee, we spoke about it, but then you have people we call engagers. So these are people who are never going to buy from you. There are people from the industry maybe trying to do the same thing as you're trying to do on LinkedIn, right? To so trying to grow their audience following, and et cetera. So they're engaging with your content and they're helping you spread the word. They are kind of your proxy, they are connected to their buyers, or they're just like also helping you with, you know, social proof because you're getting more engagement and all of these things. You have the industry influencers, I spoke about them. You want to be proactively building a relationship with them. And you have niche media owners, people who run a podcast like Nathan, run a podcast, organize events, etc. You want to be connected with them because obviously, right, you get that extra credibility, extra exposure. And you also have partner brands. So we, for example, we ran, uh, at the beginning of last year, we ran five uh, partner webinars with, we, we partner with MarTech companies, marketing technology companies. They have our same audience, but we are not competing. And so we drove like more than 2,000 signups. And, you know, I, I, I remember closing like at least like three different deals just out of those partner webinars uh, very quick, quickly after that. So what you're doing is you're kind of exchanging your audience with your partner. So you want to be building relationship with that. So like broaden, like think about it. How can I influence people that my buyers already trust? Now here's a content framework that I promised that I will share with you. And essentially, you know, if you just don't think too much about the stuff below, just think about it. You, you, you need to figure out what you want to write about. You need to figure out the topics and then you need to figure out like what kind of a post do I want to create. So let me just dive in. So the first thing and the, <laughs> the biggest mistake that people make is they don't list out all the, to all the topics, the subtopics, and the questions that your buyers have as they move through the buying journey. So this is like the first thing to do, like figure that out. How do you figure it out? You do some buyer research, you're interviewing your customers, you're looking at communities, top questions, etc. You need to do that work. It's not, it doesn't take so much time, but it saves you an enormous amount of time and makes sure that you're writing about relevant stuff. So, you have that document, you have that, that's the first step. So I don't have to think about it, just pick any question that I have. So for example, here, the topic was, okay, our big topic will funnel B2B marketing. And so, for example, one of the specific things is like, how do most B2B companies treat marketing? So that was the, this is what I wanted to write about, right? So you pick a topic and then you pick a post type. And for you, I've prepared here on the Naden, on the little disc there, uh, USB uh, 11 post types that we use uh, with a bunch of examples. So you can just like, you know, you can just uh, look at that. So uh, there. And so one of the one of the post types. So just to, to continue this example is the so-called villain post. So where you're kind of like challenging the status quo in the industry. You're positioning yourself as a thought leader because you're like you're on the mission to help improve the industry. So that's, that's the kind of the post here. They work really well. They get really, they get good engagement at, and they um, are really good positioning. So that's the second step is like, what kind of post do I wanna write? And then you do the rest actually quite quickly. 
You do a quick outline, you do a quick draft, and then you do a bit of editing at the end. But it actually shouldn't take you, after some practice, longer than 20 minutes to create a good post every day. Final section is about starting conversation, booking calls in a way that you get 40 plus percent. So, and the, the, the secret here is engagement-based outreach, and I mentioned this. So you don't want to be reaching out cold, you want to be reaching out to people based on some triggers. And the easiest trigger if you're posting is engagement on your own posts. This is just some examples you see, like acceptance rate, a minimum of 60%, some of them close to, to 90, and response rate, yeah, anywhere from 40 to 80%, which is amazing, which is like usually if you're just reaching out cold, the numbers are much, much worse. And so how does it look like? Well, in this case, uh, you know, gentleman called, called Lex engaged with the post and uh, that I wrote about account-based marketing and I told him, hey, by the way, so I'm not like pitching any, I'm just saying, uh, by the way, if you want to learn more, we also have this event that we are running, it's a free event. Now, in this case, Lex, actually a Texan here, he, uh, he, he was actually in the market and so he said, you know what, I'd like to connect and so we had a call and that, that turned into an actual sales opportunity. But most of them don't, and that doesn't matter. You're there, you're nurturing, it's a long game. When they're ready, they will be. So you're always like offering to take the relationship to the next level, but you're leaving them in control. You're not being pushy, you're not being creepy. So I also included a bunch of scripts that you can use with different triggers. And just to close this, I wanted to share with you our weekly pillar framework. And it's just to like keep yourself or people who are doing this, like if you have people from sales, accountable. So just defining a number of activities you want to do each week. For example, I wanna, I, I'm, I'm committed to post five times a week, uh, you know, reaching out and connecting to probably like, you know, 50 people, 50, 50 you know, ICPs. Uh, you know, posting some thoughtful comments on thought leaders, posts, etc. So it's really important that you get somewhere a routine, right? Uh, I, you know, aim to get anywhere between three to five hours, if you can, like an hour a day, of course. And that's why we use the weekly pillars because not every day, day is the same, right? So you want to give yourself some wiggle room, but also be committed because the results only come, like I, I was mentioning, only come after being consistent with this for, you know, a, period of time, at least like a quarter, two quarters, that, that's when you're really starting to see the things pick up. And so that's what I covered. I shared our LinkedIn framework, how to create content in a quick way, drive awareness, and how to turn that awareness into actual buyer conversations that can lead into opportunities. So, um, yes, uh, not the slide that I was expecting. So thank you very much.